Hi, and welcome back to the show. Today, my guest is Brad Macbeth, and uh, Brad is the president of MacbethMick.com. Uh, he's been in the financial services industry for 12 years and runs Macbeth Mortgage Fund. Well, thanks very much for joining us on the show today, Brad. It's great to be with you, Kirsten. Well, today uh, I, I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit about the idea of investment risk. Um, so to take it out of your uh, experience hat there, um, what's your experience been over the last 12 years when it comes to um, taking risks in investments? Right. Well, the interesting thing about risk is people have a very difficult time assessing the real risk in an investment. Uh, usually we're hearing a story that explains how an investment works, maybe some of the successes, that kind of thing. But often people don't really understand uh, how their money, in what way their money is at risk in an investment. So uh, we've put together some pieces that, that help them to understand that, especially from uh, our point of view. So for example, when you invest money in a real estate project, there's a number of ways to invest money and they hold different levels of risk. Typically, when someone puts their money into the project directly or even buys a revenue property of their own, they're putting uh, their capital at risk. And what that means is if there's some kind of a failure, their money is the most at risk and they will be the last to be paid if monies are being recovered. Um, so what we look at is something that's called the capital stack and the capital stack just examines where your capital lies uh, within an investment of any description. So for example, if you're in a first mortgage position in a capital stack, then you're going to get paid first in the event of some kind of a failure. Second mortgage will get paid second and so on. And then you might have some kind of bondholders or preferred shareholders, and then finally the uh, straight equity shareholders. So that's really what people need to be asking themselves in a real estate type investment is, where is my money in the scheme of risk? Not just are these good people who look like they might be able to execute a plan, but if they fail, where exactly is my money? Now the same thing applies on the income side of things. Uh, if we're going to get income out of a real estate investment, um, there's a number of ways that can come. And a very typical one right now you hear in the private equity space is, uh, for example, someone's going up and buying a property in some distressed real estate area, might be Arizona, might be Nevada, what have you. And they're taking, uh, they're buying properties, they're renting them out, and that rent is income and they distribute that or a portion of that to their investors. And their long-term plan is to sell the properties for a profit and that would mm -hmm. provide a capital return. Uh, the challenge here though is in what we would call the income stack. In that scenario, everyone, uh, there's a lot of people with their hand out first. Uh, of course, taxes have to be paid, uh, municipal, state, what have you. Also, um, all the expenses of operating a rental property business, um, all sorts of legal, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then finally there's a profit, and that's what may get distributed to investors. When you look at a mortgage investment corporation, there, uh, especially the way we've set things up, there are no uh, barriers between the interest income that's paid to us by the borrowers and the returns that the investors get. In fact, we're paying 8.1% return this year, but um, we don't even get paid until we've actually already paid that 8.1%. So the investors get paid first, and then we get paid our 0.75% management fee. Uh, so that puts the investors, from an income point of view, in the prime position in the income stack. And you can see that illustrated in, in both those graphics. Mm-hmm. Well, it's an interesting uh, way of laying it out uh, because obviously there's, uh, you know, you put money into a project and you, you never think that the people running the project are putting money in their pockets before, but there's a lot of other people involved in things and then obviously it makes total sense that uh, in order to keep the project, people got to pay certain things. Um, 
Brad, uh, if the people want more information about your products and maybe have some questions to ask about this concept and the way you've uh, portrayed it here, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, if they go to our website at steadyreturns.ca, uh, we actually have an informational piece that they can download that talks about what I've just been saying. And we continue to add more information there just to help people understand what investment risk is and how they should be thinking about it. Hmm. Well, great having you on the show. Thanks for, for joining us and hopefully we'll get you on again real soon. Thanks, Kirsten. It was good talking to you. Our guest today again, Brad Macbeth with MacbethMic.com. Um, 12 years experience um, and uh, specializing obviously in the idea of uh, mortgage investment corporations. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. Stay tuned again real soon. We'll see you again sometime soon. Bye for now.